Hello, everybody. So we started in time. Let's get started with the, the second part of our Franco-Italian Day uh, for early career researchers. Let me first um, express my gratitude. My gratitude goes to all the panel the panelists uh, um, who kindly accepted our invitation. So, and uh, since it is a Franco-French-Italian Day, you know, uh, it, it was all all. It was very well balanced, and uh, I think that this 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 round table is also, as you can see, a representative of big companies, uh, uh, medium-sized company, and so startup. So different realities and uh, offering possibility, opportunity to early career researchers. So you are also uh, you, are, you you are PhD. So uh, you you perfectly know the meaning of a, the value, the plus of a PhD, and maybe the, the, the pros and cons difficulties encountered when uh, you start a career in non-academic context. So let's start. Thank you very much to Roxanne Brachet, PhD in public health and epidemiology, research and platform department at Grenoble Biocluster, France. And uh, thank you. Uh, if you, you can very briefly, um, introduce yourself, um, tell, tell us something about your background, your current position, uh, what are you expecting uh, from PhD, uh, for which position you are recruiting PhDs, and thank you for giving us also a key final key message. Roxanne, are you here? Otherwise, let's maybe continue with Carla. So maybe also, maybe she, she was there before, maybe she's, I, I hope, hopefully she has no technical problems. So anyway, so we start with Carlo Barbera, um, PhD in biomedicine, senior project manager, corporate research and development, Alpha Sigma, an important pharmaceutical company. Uh, everybody knows it, so he is himself a PhD, so, so he perfectly knows uh, <clears throat> the meaning of, for a researcher deciding to, to, to move to other sectors, so, and thank you for, for your presentation, uh, your concise presentation, because we have lots of questions for you, thank you. Sure, thank you very much. And I'll be very quick. So my name is Carlo, Carlo Barbera. Uh, I'm a scientist by training because I graduated in biotechnology and I've got a PhD in biomedicine, virology specifically. And uh, as Lucia said, I'm currently a senior project manager for corporate research and development at Alpha Sigma, uh, which is, yes, one of the largest Italian pharmaceutical companies. So we have little time, so I want to go straight to the point. Uh, why industry wants or should want PhDs and what makes PhDs different from other professionals? Well, I, I think the answer is that we live in a very complicated world. And uh, uh, if we didn't realize it before the pandemic, uh, now I think it's crystal clear to everybody that we cannot keep on doing things the way we used to do it before. Uh, so we definitely need people who are trained to think. Uh, who are used to make themselves difficult questions and who are used to try to answer those questions. Uh, so in short, what industry wants from PhD? They want your brain. They want your critical thinking. They want your ability to think outside of the box and uh, to find new solutions to new challenging problems. And this is, I think, what really makes PhDs different. Their creativity, their ability, and also their habit to innovation. I think it's just simple as that. From my point of view, I think it's very important to forget about the hard skills. Hard skills are, have been recently dead, I think. Uh, if you haven't already worked for a project that are of company or a corporate interest, I don't think that's a big problem because again, it's the way of thinking that company should or want to buy. Uh, it's what you can or are will, willing to be able to do with your soft skills and, and not what you've done in the past. I mean, not strictly what you've done from the hard skills point of view. Uh, now, uh, I've been asked also to, to talk about the, the recruitment process in, uh, in our company, but um, I, I don't want to bother you with the details of the recruitment process. I would like to give you 
maybe some advices about how I think you can get your foot into the door uh, of the industry. And from my perspective, uh, there are three uh, main critical factors to do that. And these are preparation, preparation, preparation. Mm -hmm. Why do I stress this factor of preparation? Uh, because the most successful, I think, factor to, to get your foot into the industry is to be prepared to um, the way industry do interviews. And uh, uh, I want to be very clear on this point because I think it's crucial. Uh, there are no excuses not to be prepared. Today, we have a lot of access to a lot of information, tons of information you have at disposal, and uh, PhDs, young PhDs, have to be ready to this process. So I wanted to give you some uh, maybe advices from my point of view of what are the do's and don'ts in the recruitment process that can help you uh, overcome some of the difficulties of this process because it's really, it's a nine inning boxing match, uh, um, uh, uh, an interview with the, with the company. So uh, for the do, definitely do your homework. What that means, if you're interested uh, in a position, don't just send your application, research the company, um, try to understand why they have the vacancy open. Is this a new position, for example, or somebody left, or maybe they're trying to build a new facility or a new department inside the company. Understand who is the hiring manager and who is involved in the recruitment process. Again, here, no excuses. Uh, you're living in a social media era, so you have to leverage social media wisely to get an edge on your perspective to work for the company. About the don'ts, I just said that, don't simply send your application. Uh, that would be some kind of waste of time. You have the same chance to be chosen as you have the same chance of winning the lottery if you just send an application. Mm -hmm. uh, you will be put together with a whole lot of competition and or worst, your CV will be screened by a, an ATS, which is an applicant tracking system, a, a computer to put it bluntly. So. Uh, you don't want that. What do you really want is to stand out from the crowd. So in order to do that, another do is do get in contact with people. Try to connect, try to engage with them, try to get as many informations as you can. Uh, one thing you don't want to do, on the contrary, is just to forward your CV to these people. Uh, because that would be really uh, gross, I say. Uh, what you want to do is to show them you're curious. So just engage with the people and say, hello, my name is Carlo, for example, and I saw you posted this position for uh, this new position and would be keen to know more. So try to engage with the conversation. Uh, and here I come to probably what I think is the most important do of all, do make questions. Because if you're lucky enough to get, to get to the interview with a company, at some point, you will get to the point where you're asked, uh, do you have any question for me? And now I can tell you very, very easily that if you say, no, I'm, I'm just fine. I got everything. Uh, I got all the information I need. Well, that candidate very hardly, very hardly would be hired. That's guaranteed. So that's the, the, the moment where you want to make questions. Uh, make open questions, uh, questions that the answer is not strictly yes or no, but they are open. Uh, so you show interest. Uh, for example, uh, you can ask uh, what is the thing that you like it most about working for that company? Or uh, what is the biggest challenge that your company is facing and how the new hire uh, can help overcome this challenge? Or how will be my job uh, evaluated so that I can have a positive impact on the organization. This is your chance to get more information, to get an edge and to show curiosity and to show that you're really a good fit for that job. So don't waste it. So uh, finally, my take home message will be uh, do what you can do best. Be creative, uh, get notice. And the best thing to do that is to make practice. Start early, start now, even during your PhD to make your connection and rehearse, repeat how to manage an interview and I, I cannot assure that but I'm pretty sure that the right opportunity will come up. Thank you. Great. Uh, for, thank you for such a brilliant presentation. You know Alpha Sigma is one of the top five pharmaceutical companies in Italy. So are you recruiting PhD? Aren't you?
Absolutely, absolutely. Um, my question. We, <laughs> yes, uh, the PhDs point. are required more and more for a number of roles, which is not restricted to research and development, of course. Of course, research and development is where there is the higher concentration of PhDs, but uh, things are getting bigger for PhDs also in other uh, company functions, like, for example, um, regulatory affairs. So the, the, the function inside the company where uh, uh, our people interact with the regulatory agencies, which are those agencies that actually granted uh, the permission to uh, market a, a drug. Um, also a patent, uh, the, the, the legal and the patent aspect are very, very hungry of PhDs because they have that knowledge, uh, technical knowledge, and they can really understand uh, technical matters from a, a very, uh, a very inside out point of view. So um, yes, technically there is no limit to PhDs to where they can work inside a company. Uh, and I'd really say that it's up to you to, to, to state your value and to make sure that this value is appreciated and regarded as, a, uh, as an added value to the company. There is a question sir, for you. What types of information is, is essential to be reflected into a cover letter about a company out of our research while applying for a job? Well, um, uh, <laughs> I think cover letter can be a matter of debate. Uh, I'm not an expert in HR, so I'll, I'll just give you my take. Uh, cover, letter, cover letter is not always necessary. Uh, sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Uh, sometimes I prefer cover letters. Uh, if uh, I don't think there is a specific matter that you have to, uh, to cover on the cover letter. Uh, what I always like to, to see uh, in a CV or in a cover letter or wherever any application is something that interests is intriguing me is interesting me so try to try to tell a story try to say something that is intriguing uh, of course you want to say who you are uh, and why you apply for that position and uh, of course uh, why you're interested in that position and what makes you special for that position this is something that really uh, can be of interest for who is reading always remember that people who are reading are uh, sometimes they have a very small span of attention mm -hmm. so try to to be catchy to, to be short and concise instead of too long. And maybe, you know, like, uh, like Giacomo Leopardi, what is uh, vague and not so definite, sometimes is even better than too lengthy and too, and too detailed. So great. And uh, I think that it, is, it goes without saying that, is there an evolution, like a career evolution for PhD within your organization? So are there opportunities to grow well, uh, definitely, yes. Uh, of course, uh, opportunities are always a matter of um, uh, uh, luck from one side because you have to be at the right moment in the right place. Uh, but of course, also personal, uh, uh, personal effort. So uh, what I think a PhD can give uh, in terms of difference is the, their effort and their ability to see things from a different perspective. And this is something that is always highly regarded. So as long as you put yourself, put your mind into it and, uh, and do your job every day with, uh, with uh, you know, with constance and, uh, and uh, with uh, uh, perseverance, uh, I think everywhere there was, there's room for improvement. Uh, I started as a scientist. Uh, I moved to the industry as a scientist. And then after several years, I've got the opportunity to move to the management and manage research pro projects. But again, it was a, a, a matter of luck because a colleague of mine oh, go, went uh, retired. So, I, and I was there and I had a big knowledge of the project, but also you can be, uh, you can be even more, uh, more lucky and, uh, and have other opportunities. So it's pretty much up to you, but don't be too, uh, how can I say, uh, don't be too sad if that don't happen because sometimes it's not up to you. Uh, <laughs> business is very complicated and sometimes yes. you do your best, but it's, uh, it's just not, it's just not your, the opportunity. The right opportunity is given by, by your preparation and the fact that you're in the right spot at the right moment. So not every, everything is under your control and you have to, 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 you have to just accept it and um, you know, uh, do things good and good things will come. Yes, I agree with you. I totally agree with you. There are lots of questions in the chat, but I think that first of all, we, we, we need to, 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 to 
to, to, to listen to the presentation of the other panelists. Uh, and then we, we can so uh, leave the floor to our uh, to the audience. Roxanne Brachet uh, for being here, so from, from the French side, PhD in public health and epidemiology research and platform department at Genopole Biocluster. So, you know, we want to know something more about your background, your current position, if you hire a PhD, um, about your recruitment process, and a final key message. Okay, thank you very much. And thank you for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to present Genopol and our um, funding schemes to, to young researchers. Um, can I share, uh, if I try to share my screen here, yeah, is it? Uh, partage just one second. Juice. Ah, yes. Uh, and if I put it as full screen, is it okay? Yeah, it's full screen. Yeah. Okay. So, yes. So uh, I'm uh, Roxanne. I'm um, manager of uh, partnerships and fundings in Genopol. Uh, more specifically, I'm in charge of academic partnerships and academic fundings that cover fundings to uh, senior researchers uh, as team leaders, uh, fundings to young researchers through uh, postdoctoral fellowships. And we also have other funding schemes to students for uh, internships, for uh, trainings uh, and other, um, um, other operation. Um, and uh, so a few words about Genopol. We are a biocluster dedicated to biotechnologies, uh, genomics, uh, and life science applied to health or to environment. We are uh, located uh, in the Paris region, just um, at uh, 30 kilometers from Paris region. It's the, um, as we say, uh, la, la banlieue parisienne. So. Uh, uh, very easy to 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 travel to to Genopol, and uh, in concrete words, um, we units uh, higher educational uh, institutions, a university, and three engineer schools. And uh, about uh, you have the figure here: um, academic laboratories, um, nineteen academic laboratories. 77 uh, business uh, companies. Uh, companies and laboratories are all in the fields of life science, as I said, uh, in health or in uh, environment. And uh, so in this environment, you have academia, private sector, and we have also technological um, facilities or platforms that are accessible for all uh, the researchers, whatever they are from the academia or from the private sectors. And here you have the distribution of the um, um, number of people uh, on the different disciplines or research fields and innovation in Genopole. You have here a third of the people uh, who are working in uh, gen and cell uh, biotherapies and around 30% in uh, genomics and um, human genomics and environmental genomics or biodiversity. And we have also an important uh, laboratory in uh, bioinformatics and biomathematics. So all, all the research fields that can be applied to health or to environment uh, are um, covered or most of uh, these uh, fields are covered in, uh, in Genopol. So it represents a huge uh, research area in which we can host uh, PhDs uh, just after or um, their PhD or who are more uh, senior in their uh, uh, in, in their uh, cursus. Um, you can find more details in the annual report. And in terms of support to the researchers and to the PhD, we have several programs. As I said, we have a program for uh, team leaders a program uh, for uh, postdoctoral mobility. Uh, we also support the creation of uh, companies. Uh, and as I said also, we support the, the training and mentoring program, for example, for researchers who want to open to uh, entrepreneurship. 
uh, and are interested in creation of uh, private companies. So here uh, I will focus on uh, point two and three, which are, I guess, more interesting for uh, PhDs. Um, and yeah, we have launched uh, last year uh, with the partnerships with uh, ABG, um, uh, a program which is called Apogee Bio. It is a program to fund postdoctoral fellowships. It's co-funded by the European Commission. So, you know, it's uh, within the field of um, uh, the category of uh, programs, uh, um, Marie Curie, Marie Sklodowska Curie uh, co-fund. So um, we will open the next call, the second call of Apogee Bio this week. And the deadline will be on 30 of January. And the aim of this uh, fellowship is to attract uh, researchers from all over the world, from Europe or from uh, outside of Europe and <laughs> from Italy, uh, who wants to who want to make to perform a postdoctorate postdoctorate either in an academic laboratory or in a private company. This is also possible. The hosting of uh, uh, postdoctoral is possible in both uh, sectors within Genopol. Uh, it's uh, um, a funding uh, that corresponds to an average of 3,000 euros uh, per month as a net salary and for a total duration of 24 months. It's uh, the usual duration of a postdoc. Uh, so in the on the uh, the website, you, you can find more details on the hosting teams, as I said, academic or private hosting teams, and you can get more details. I just show you just thirty seconds the the website. Does it work? Does it work? Is it okay? Yes. So you can uh, no, we, yeah we, we cannot see the the website well, you cannot see the presentation. Okay, so I come back to the presentation then. Uh, oh. um, mm, mm, mm. Nouveau partage. <laughs> I should have not click on the website. Arrêtez le partage. I stop it and I come back to it. Is it okay? Yeah, we see the, the presentation. The presentation, okay. So uh, you will find uh, more uh, information on the website, but just keep in mind that it is 24 months, 3,000 euros net per month, uh, hosting in academia or in private uh, sector, and uh, there are very uh, specific conditions and eligibility criteria that are from the European Commission. We cannot change them. So uh, take the time to read carefully the, the information uh, th th that you will find on the website. For example, there is a mobility rule. It is strictly for uh, incoming mobility. So if you are already living in France for more than uh, two, or, uh, two or three years, then you, you will not be eligible, for example. So take, uh, take the time to really be aware about uh, all the conditions and the criteria. And another uh, obligation from the European Commission in the Marie Curie uh, actions is that it's up to you as an applicant to make the first proposition of, of uh, research. It is not what we see usually where it's the laboratory or the company who publishes um, a project, then take the time to, to read carefully the description of the hosting teams that are available on the on the website and to yeah to draft a first proposition that fits to the hosting teams and of course uh, <laughs> that, that fit also to your uh, expectations. Um, and um, Yes, yeah, so yes, I, I let you the time uh, after uh, afterwards to, to vi visit the, the website. Uh, we have other um, schemes to, to support the creation or, and the development of uh, private companies. 
um, maybe I will start, yeah, I will start with this one, the shaker. Uh, you all see it, it's the, the shaker from the ID to the project. It's um, a program in which we support young researchers uh, from the PhD and after the PhD who have uh, an innovative ID uh, and you want to, to test to make the proof of concept. So you apply to this program and once again, you will have all the details in the website of Genopol. You apply to this program with your uh, clear description of the ID, the outcome that you anticipate, uh, the impact that you anticipate. And uh, if you are selected to this uh, scheme, to this uh, call, then you are selected for a duration of six months. During these six months, you have uh, free access, uh, you are hosted in, uh, within Genopol facilities, and you have access to laboratories with all the equipment that are necessary for research. And you have also access to the technological platform, technological facilities. So they include small, but also large equipment that might be useful or, uh, or uh, necessary to your research, for example, uh, imaging, uh, uh, spectro, uh, photometer, uh, flow cytometry. We have all these uh, technological up-to-date and uh, cutting edge uh, equipments that are accessible to the uh, people who are who, who win uh, in, uh, in this call. And all this for free during six months. Then after the six months, if you have made the proof of concept, then you can apply to uh, another program, which is the creation of, uh, of a company. And Genopol uh, uh, accompanies you and uh, yes, support uh, uh, the, the second step of uh, innovation. And if you, oh no. <laughs> For uh, young companies that are already existing or that are coming from the Shaker program, we have the program uh, GenIO, which is a one-year um, uh, support to um, existing, already existing young company. And in this uh, program, then we help you in, uh, for example, uh, to how to, to study and to, to understand the uh, market access, how to make a fundraising, uh, how to enhance the communication of your uh, new company. So it is also a program of uh, coaching and uh, support to, to very young companies. And then after that, we have other programs for more mature companies. But yeah, I think uh, the, more, the, the, the most interesting to you are already in these uh, programs. Um, and yeah, and uh, that's all. <laughs> you, you are really offering many opportunities. So, Jean Paul yes. and BioCluster is really yeah, we try to, attractive opportunities. Yeah. To be and we try to attract both in the academic sector and in the private sector. And uh, the aim is to not to have academia and private uh, separately, but uh, to create uh, interaction and collaboration. To bridge the gap, to bridge yeah. the gap. This is, yeah. this is also the, the, uh, the aim, our, the goal of this, uh, this panel discussion. So try to bridge the gap between companies and academia. Exactly. So uh, there are lots of questions in the chat, but now I'm going to, to introduce uh, the next um, speaker. And I'm just in brackets, uh, Carlo Barbera is already Hans, we're replying to some question in the chat. So, uh, because we, we, we have to, we, we, we cannot run out of the time. There, are, there is another round table later. Uh, and so, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you, if you kindly, you can kindly also reply to question in the chat. You can read the chat. Okay. And uh, I'm going to leave the floor to Simone Olgiati. This, this is the time of, of Italy. PhD in Human Genetics, Head of Innovative Sequencing Technology Lab, Merck, Italy, so a big American multinational pharmaceutical company. And uh, he, he started uh, after his PhD when we, we met before while preparing this roundtable, I 
I remind, I remember that he, he explained to me that he decided to, to stop working for he had a permanent position to do a PhD. So thank you for talking, telling, telling our story. Thank you, Simone. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for the possibility to share my experience with uh, such a young uh, audience. I'm, I'm not an HR professional. I'm a, I'm a scientist. So what I can share today is a bit of my personal experience and also explain uh, what our PhD is doing uh, within uh, Merck. I am a biologist by training. I have studied uh, my master in Italy and uh, I have then spent uh, seven years uh, in the Netherlands uh, studying, uh, uh, completing my PhD in human genetics and performing some uh, uh, initial uh, job activities in startup companies. I have then four years ago moved back to Italy for the position in which I am now. I am uh, uh, responsible for a laboratory in Merck. This laboratory is called Innovative Sequencing Technologies lab. Uh, it's focused on the application of uh, um, recent uh, highly parallelized technologies for the sequencing of nucleic acids, and in particular in the use of these technologies for uh, the development of analytical methods that are used uh, in the biomanufacturing process. I am part uh, of the uh, Merck uh, division that works uh, on, uh, on pharma. It's called healthcare. We are talking about the Merck group that is based in Darmstadt in, the, in Germany. And uh, my team is uh, made up of uh, five people. So I'm responsible for all the daily activities uh, and projects that are carried out uh, uh, in my lab. So I guess one of the things that is of interest for the audience is uh, uh, how I managed to, to land into this position. So I'm going to provide a couple of uh, suggestions that are based on my uh, personal experience. Uh, the first suggestion I'm going to give to the audience is that uh, if you are doing a PhD and you want to move to the academia, you should definitely try to start planning this move early. And by early, I don't mean that two or three months before your PhD defense, you start to look for uh, job positions. This is too late. You need to uh, start in the early years of your PhD, or maybe even before you start your PhD, to really look into the market, uh, understand what are the needs of the market, look for job uh, positions, uh, understand what companies are typically looking for, understand what you have of the skills they look for, and what are your gaps. And the important thing is to really work on those gaps. You need to work hard to fill those gaps. So for example, in my case, I realized early in my PhD that if I wanted to have a future in industry, one of the things that was asked to um, geneticists was also to have some level of uh, data analysis skills. So I've invested a lot into understanding bioinformatics, uh, doing courses, uh, uh, reading books, uh, try to do as much as possible in that space. This is just a technical example, but in fact, uh, as it was also said before, you need to also work a lot on your soft skills. Uh, for example, work on your uh, people management skills. This is typically not difficult in all the uh, laboratories you have the possibility to, for example, follow younger researchers and uh, um, really uh, help them uh, and organize their daily activity. So this is something that typically PhD students uh, develop. Or uh, if you realize you have issues with uh, uh, foreign languages, you should definitely try to do an experience uh, abroad uh, or maybe take courses on technologies in order to expand your horizon. One of the issues I think that PhDs often have is that they uh, have a, a very narrow uh, field of research. Uh, they tend to focus a lot uh, on a very narrow field. And if they are lucky enough and that field is of interest for industry, then they are set. They will move easily to, to the industry. But if that uh, uh, narrow field, as it is most of the time, is, uh, doesn't have a business case around it, uh, they will have difficulties. So it's important that you work on all the other skills that uh, PhD students for sure have and that were already mm -hmm. listed early. Um, the second tip I have is that you need to get out of your comfort zone. Uh, it's very important in uh, very uh, early stages of your career to do not settle on the things that you have just because uh, um, 
starting new activities uh, is scaring you or it requires too much challenge. It's very important that uh, you have the courage to, to start something new. And uh, in my case, uh, Lucia was already mentioning it. Uh, even before my PhD, I, I really at some point decided to, to leave a permanent position and embark on the PhD. Uh, that was because uh, at that time, uh, um, I felt like I needed to improve my English skills. I wanted to do a bit more research and I felt like I needed the international experience to enter into, uh, into the research environment. And it was not difficult because it was a couple of years after 2009, so the crisis was still closed and the permanent position in Italy was not easy to come by, but uh, still uh, it was uh, probably the best uh, decision I've taken in, uh, in my career. So I really invite you to do the same. So what are uh, PhD doing in, uh, in Merck? Uh, we recruit PhDs, uh, of course, typically for their technical expertise. Most of the time they start with some type of uh, scientific role. So they enter as a scientist or uh, uh, anyway in technical areas. But what we are really looking for are all the other skills that were already mentioned. So I'm echoing a bit uh, uh, Professor or uh, Dr. Barbera. Um, so they, their uh, communication skills, their people management skills, uh, they typically manage to deliver projects. So they have good time management uh, skills and they also can uh, um, deliver milestones on projects. And they're also fast learners and uh, have very good uh, problem solving skills. So these are all things that are very difficult to find in the job market. And um, uh, that's the one of the reasons why we hire them. Um, typically, PhDs only starts from the technical area. In Merck, we have a very structured project um, program for uh, personal development, personal development that uh, doesn't only include uh, PhDs. Uh, every employee has a personal development plan that discusses uh, uh, regularly with uh, his or her manager and uh, based on the personal attitudes uh, uh, together they define uh, learning uh, activities in order to uh, improve uh, their position and prepare for the next step of, uh, of their career. And uh, the same goes for PhDs. They have uh, to follow this type of program and typically they will end up in uh, all kinds of positions, uh, quality assurance, uh, regulatory, uh, as well as um, security uh, and environment uh, or uh, in the management of uh, equipment validation and maintenance. So really um, the sky is the limit in this sense. And with this, maybe I would like to also conclude with, uh, um, with my final remark. So I, I think, uh, as I was saying, you, of course, need to start planning on your development early. But in fact, uh, you always have to work on your development. It's a, it's a never-ending process that you will have to continue throughout your uh, entire career. So the, the main message I would like to leave you with is that you have to challenge yourself every time as soon as you identify a new area that can be uh, useful to be added in your CV, but it's something a little bit far from you and makes you uncomfortable, probably is the right decision to go there and really try to tackle that problem. Totally agree. Thank you for, for all this piece of, piece of advice. Uh, just a burning question from my side. Uh, it will be very concise. Pros and cons of working at such a big company like Merck. But the pros uh, for sure is that uh, you have uh, all the possibilities to perform advanced research. Uh, so there's typically no budget issue if you are able to demonstrate that uh, the technology that you want to use uh, is relevant for a business case. Uh, there is typically no problem in investing into it. Uh, so this is, of course, really rewarding for uh, researchers, especially in their uh, early stages. Uh, the cons is, of course, is the same, that uh, every time you propose something, it has to be business uh, related. <laughs> Yes, so um, once again, you, you, I'm, I'm just reminding to the audience, they can keep on writing so questions in, uh, in the chat while we are um, completing our presentation. So once again, thank you to Simone Olgiati, and uh, I'm thank now...
introducing Christel Blondin, head of recruitment and youth employment policy, Stellantis, uh, France, but there is also Stellantis in Torino <laughs> as well. And so um, thank you for uh, Guy, telling us something more about your, uh, your uh, career path, your background, uh, even how we, for which position you are recruiting PhDs, uh, and a final key message. Thank you. Okay, thank, thanks a lot. So um, I'm very pleased, of course, to, to take part to this uh, round table. Uh, and to uh, have the opportunity to speak about the Stantis group and uh, about our commitment uh, for PhD. Uh, so I'm Christelle Blondin, uh, I'm the head of uh, recruitment for France. Uh, I have also in charge uh, youth employment, so it means that every year we receive internships, uh, apprenticeships and VU. Um, and uh, I'm also in charge of uh, schools uh, relation. So I, I felt uh, legitimate uh, today to speak uh, because the Stellantis group uh, was born, I mean, from the merger of uh, XPSA uh, and XFCA, uh, so a French group and an Italian group. Um, so maybe I, I'm going to make just a short presentation uh, of Stellantis. Uh, so Stellantis is born, uh, in fact, last year. Uh, it was in January 2021. So it's a young group, in fact. Um, so in, in the past year, so we really uh, try to work uh, in common culture. Uh, so the group is composed now of uh, 300,000 employees. Uh, so we are, we are a big group uh, in more than 150 nationalities. Um, so the group brings together, in fact, 14 brands. Um, so Peugeot, Citroën, uh, Fiat, Chrysler, Maserati, Jeep, Abarth. Uh, VS, Dodge, Opel, Vauxhall, Lancia, Ram, and free to move So, um, so just to give you general uh, maybe uh, information, so the group has sold the six point five million so vehicles uh, in the two thousand twenty one. So uh, we are the fourth uh, world car manufacturer and the second in Europe. So maybe the other point, uh, which is maybe significant now, uh, is that uh, maybe we are probably more international. Um, so of course, uh, PSA and FCA were already, uh, I mean, represented uh, in many countries uh, through their uh, different activities, so manufacturing, uh, retail, and support functions. So maybe, um, and, and just to give maybe a focus on what we, we will need to do now is that um, the projects and strategy uh, that we have to work on, uh, see the, we created I mean, recently a new entity uh, dedicated to software. And uh, we are really focused on electrical and autonomous, uh, autonomous uh, vehicles. So this uh, new entity uh, will have to work on the vehicles of the 14 brands uh, of the group. And so from a group really oriented on uh, manufacturing, uh, uh, we can see now that we are probably more focused on IT, uh, which uh, gives also, I mean, some uh, perspectives for the PhD students. Um, so I, I want maybe just to, to precise that um, the group for first uh, to CIFRE. Uh, so it's an uh, industrial uh, convention on training uh, through uh, research. Uh, students, uh, the opportunity is sure to, to work on specific uh, projects in many different fields. So we have uh, in average uh, in France uh, 70 CIFRE. Uh, so they stay three years in the company. And so it means that uh, every year we renew uh, one third in fact of the CIFRE. So we welcome each year 20 to 30 new CIF in the company. And so um, usually, in fact, we ask the directions uh, to make uh, the subject uh, uh, emerge. So in fact, that the topics uh, which, uh, so where we work on uh, are uh, the autonomous vehicle, uh, lean tech, uh, city of the future, and full digital. So this is the subject uh, that we, we, we work on uh, 2021. So in the coming weeks, uh, we will probably have the new uh, uh, orientations, but it will be uh, 
slightly the same, I think. And so, um, so each year, so we have the, the opportunity to, uh, to have some recruitments for PhD. It's not uh, a lot, but we have some. And um, recently, I mean, uh, we have a job offer uh, called the Research uh, Scientist Artificial Intelligence. And it was specifically in the software direction. That's why I wanted really to, to share with you uh, this new orientation for the group, because uh, this is probably where we will probably have some uh, new recruitments in the coming months. So wh what I wanted maybe to, to give in terms of... Uh, uh, for, for the PhD students, maybe to invite you to um, usually uh, visit our recruitment site. Uh, it's www.stellantis.com um, to be uh, and to go into the part uh, called uh, work with us to have a look because um, as soon as we have a new opportunity, uh, so it's a focus on recruitment side. And so um, I invite you also to candidate online uh, because this is the, the better way for us to, um, to know uh, that you have some interest. And after you, you go into a, a classic process for recruitment, uh, where you will be, uh, of course, uh, invite for some interview. Um, so, yeah, so it, it was quite difficult for me to, to, um, to um, I didn't have uh, an opportunity right now, but uh, that's why I wanted to uh, invite you to usually have a, have a look on our open site to, um, to see if there are some opportunity for you. Um, so um, let's, uh, let's have a look. <laughs> Yes, so um, Stellantis is, is a new group, and during our webinar workshops of our trade, where we try to strengthen the soft skills of our PhD, we put the stress on uh, the skills of the future. So artificial intelligence is uh, a field, and it's not an unknown yes, field. Yes, it's one field, it of course. Yes, one field. Floor. Yes, and, and we have um, some subject also on mobility. Uh, so, uh, which is uh, which could be also very interesting, maybe for PhD students. Um, this is really some um, some maybe future um, uh, subjects where we we are very involved. Uh, so, um, so I wanted maybe to give just an idea of the of the of the fields uh, where maybe uh, students can find a PhD can find maybe some opportunities. Yes, and just was the, I just check the chat if there are some new. As a PhD in applied robotics for biology, my goal is to work after my PhD in the research and development sector of a company. What advice do you give, would you give me for that? In terms of um, new, for an application? Yes, yes, I think that it was about recruitment. Uh, I put it also in your private chat. You know, as a PhD in applied robotics for biology, my goal is to work after maybe yeah, technical so, advice is to. Yeah, so the idea is really to, um, I think that um, a point which is quite important is of course the, the curiosity and involvement and commitment in the subject um, to be, um, to be, um, motivation. A, so, yes, motivation. of course, motivation. Uh, so in, in, in our company, so we have many people quite um, uh, passionate by, by cars, but it's not only the way, <laughs> of course, to, to join the company. Uh, but um, yes, to be uh, motivated, um, to, to see or maybe to show your, your creativity also. Uh, in the way how you can, and the approach that you can have on the subject, um, and um, the, the, maybe um, how you can treat them, and um, uh, of course to to have to always have um, in your spec some uh, uh, idea of the how the mobility can be, uh, uh, how you can uh, have the approach for the for the future uh, in our. Uh, in a car manufacturer, because um, this is, uh, uh, of course, we have some environment uh, aspects that we have to, to take into account uh, in the different fields, in fact, of the company. So, so definitely, so Stellantis, a new reality, a big, a new group, is hiring PhD. 
So he's looking yes. for, he's in search of excellence, he's in search of brains. Maybe uh, just, um, sorry, Lucia, just a few uh, words on the recruitment process, Kristen. Yeah, so the recruitment process is really, uh, uh, so I invite people to, to go in, in, into the recruitment site because this is the, um, the, the better way uh, and to apply. Of course, if you uh, see an offer uh, where you could be interested in, uh, just apply online. So we are informed and so this is the better way and the first uh, step, of course. And after uh, to, um, so we'll give you, I mean, the opportunity after to, to, to um, have some contacts with the hiring managers and to, to give into details and the technical aspects maybe of the, of the job. Uh, so yes, this is the better way. So thank you for, uh, for giving us the detailed information about your new new group and uh, our we are we are to complete our round table uh, i'm going to introduce you simona campolongo this one so we, we have a, a woman a, a young and innovative startup phd in agricultural forest, forest and food sciences President and scientist at her own uh, startup uh, founded by her grape SRL. And uh, uh, she, she is going to found another one, is, if I, I well understood. Thank you for telling us something about your success stories. Thank you so much. Hi. Hi. Thanks to inviting me to uh, talk about my PhD experience. Today, I will be the one that will not explain how to be hired by a company because I, I didn't follow the, this process, but I created, as uh, Lucia said, my own work. Uh, I don't know if you can see the uh, presentation. Yes, 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 we can perfectly okay. see, but not the whole screen. It's a little bit... Could you put, now, you put it in full screen? screen? Okay. Now? Okay. Yes. Uh, I'm Simona Campolongo, and um, after uh, my degree in industrial biotechnology, I took a PhD in agricultural science here in Turin. Uh, and during the PhD, I studied a particular yeast that creates problem in wine. Uh, something that I particularly appreciated during, during my PhD uh, was the possibility to visit other countries and to do uh, foreign experiences because I went uh, in UK for three months during the first year. Uh, then in, I studied in Copenhagen for six months, uh, a, particularly, a particular um, uh, microscopic technique. And then I also flew to Australia for four months uh, uh, in a special uh, working in a um, at the um, AWRI. Uh, um, soon after the PhD, uh, I, together with two colleagues of the doctoral uh, school, I founded the first company that is called Grape. Uh, which also means in Italian Gruppo Ricerche Avanzate per l'Enologia, um, a company that for years has provided the research and development uh, services for winery. Uh, in 2018, uh, in 2018, I decided that uh, during my PhD, I did a lot of uh, lab work. Uh, actually making plates, 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 and a lot of plates uh, to, to, to study this uh, particular yeast. And in 2018, uh, after an external request, I decided, I studied actually the, um, the market and I uh, discovered that there was um, there wasn't any device uh, uh, able to um, able to for, for the wineries to do their uh, their analysis in autonomy. They had to send the samples uh, to the equipment laboratories and then wait for a results. 
Uh, so, um, in, uh, in 2018, uh, I decided to develop a new product for um, in situ analysis. It, it was innovative, easy, uh, cheap, and economic. Uh, I have got two patents, uh, and uh, I founded another company. Uh, I were with a guy who was in Italy a student during my first year of doctorate, and then a friend. The new company is now called By Yourself and sell, uh, let's call uh, uh, this product uh, that we can call self something because they are called self breath and self beer. And they uh, actually are offered to wineries and um, breweries. Uh, now uh, we are trying to follow our objectives through uh, some round of crowdfunding and through fundraising. So I'm not going to to tell you how to be hired from a company, but my suggestion is to not get discouraged during the doctorate because even when it seems that nothing is working and no experiment succeeds, you are actually learning something that you will carry with you for your life. I was very fast because I, I, I've been very fast because I, uh, the, on the agenda is written that we have to finish uh, at uh, 55. <laughs> No, 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 you, you were very concise as well as the others. So to, to, to show your, um, your career development, how you, you could uh, uh, little by little uh, move, I wouldn't say to other sectors because you, you, founded, you founded your own company. And this is why we invited you uh, to this panel discussion because it is another, uh, an alternative career for so PhD, can be hired for high position because they are highly skilled. And so they're in, in companies as Carlo and the, and, uh, the other colleagues, Simone, Christelle Blanden have explained, uh, they are looking for brains for excellence, but they can also invent their work uh, like you. And you, you did it successfully because you, you, you also took the risk because it is difficult to, uh, to leave academia uh, and to, for the unknown, uh, to to leave uh, such a comfort zone and uh, but uh, but it is uh, the, the idea of uh, the, the the added value of researchers and uh, capable of uh, creating knowledge uh, so i think that we there are, there are maybe, some there are questions maybe there are just, yeah, questions. just last quick question about language but uh, i will address this to all speakers what about language skills that are needed in your companies? Ah, okay. For example, is there French companies should uh, applicants should speak the well French or it, and English would be enough? And also for Italian companies, should be it's uh, <laughs> a good level of Italian or English would be also fine. Maybe we start again with uh, from Carlo was the first he yeah. can answer. Uh, well, of course, English is mandatory nowadays. Uh, I have to make two different maybe considerations between the, the, the Italian company and then the affiliates. Uh, for the Italian company, uh, nowadays, Italian is still required because most of your colleagues will be Italian. Uh, your environment will be Italian, so you, you will have a, a deep dive into the Italian language and Italian... <laughs> way of living, <laughs> which can be troublesome sometimes. <laughs> so um, yes, uh, uh, it's still maybe one of, of the yes biggest barrier now still, of, I think also in academic for the interna internationalization of uh, uh, enterprises and, and academia is that uh, yes, uh, Italian is still very required uh, at the end. So uh, I'd say that most of the of the of the open position now requires uh, to be uh, proficient with the Italian, unless you're applying for another country because we have subsidiaries also in other countries, uh, and uh, in that case uh, the mother language is always leading. But of course, you need to be proficient in English. Yes. Roxanne, what about languages? 
Yes, about uh, languages. Uh, in Genopole, all the laboratories and companies host international researchers. So of course, English always work, as I said, <laughs> despite the Brexit. So it's not, um, it's not a issue. However, we used to, we support um, uh, French uh, lessons to the, to the arriving uh, researchers. We have a partnerships with uh, Science Accueil. It's a, it's a member of our access uh, network and they organize uh, courses of uh, French uh, and also they organize uh, cultural uh, visits to, to, help, uh, to help people to know more about not only the language, but also the, the culture and uh, uh, the, the way of life uh, à la française. <laughs> so we, we give also this kind of support, not only uh, funding the research, but also supporting uh, the well-being uh, in France and uh, in, uh, in Paris. So yes, it's not, a, it's not a problem at the beginning, but yeah, it's better and it's appreciated if the, the researcher makes the effort to, to learn about the language. Yeah. Simone? So in our case, uh, English is of course mandatory for the mm -hmm. Italian sites. Uh, in the case of positions where there is uh, an involvement with uh, operational activities, uh, local typically it would mean that you have to interact with a lot of italian so italian is still required but we do have a lot of also global positions where you are coordinating uh, sites across uh, europe and beyond so in that case uh, only english is necessary thank you crystal London. yes so for stellantis of course uh, english is really the language uh, mandatory uh, because we are uh, an international group now. So, uh, so for all people, uh, uh, for the people who are coming in the company, uh, so we really ask the people to be able to speak in English, even if you are uh, hired uh, in France. Um, now, I mean, we have many people from many different nationalities. So really English, this English. is a professional, professional uh, language. Yes. Speak English or die. <laughs> 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 it, publish or die, and so I changed it. Yeah. And so a, a last question to Simona, because I uh, there, there, there is a question for her. Pros and cons of being a start, an innovative startup. <laughs> Pros and cons is that you have to face the reality. I mean, that you are a startup, you are an entrepreneur, but not always you you have your, uh, let's say, monthly salary, the, the one you want at the end of the month. So you have to, this is a cons, of course, but the pro is that you are the head of yourself. I mean, if, if uh, I, I have, let's say that, let's, let's do an example. I have two kids. If one, one day is sick i can take okay. it with, with my in, in my laboratory uh that day without having a lot of problem there are pros and cons uh, uh always we hope to be a large group uh, to, to become a large group uh let's hope so you are the ceo but the pros you are the ceo of your time yeah, actually, uh -huh. I have a, I have a, many uh, guys in my group, uh, but they usually are uh, doing their thesis or sometimes they are PhD, visiting PhD. So I'm actually the head of uh, many people, but temporary people, let's say, because we, we, we are not strong enough to have a permanent position, except me. Okay, yeah, it's clear that yeah, 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 you are young, you are promising, so take your time. So we are the, we are finishing because we have another, we have the last um, round, online round table of today. So thanks a million to all our panelists uh, uh, for their uh, for their precious contribution. So I, I am I'm still receiving uh, via also via my mail. So Questions. I think that you are you have you are able to motivate to motivate and stimulate uh, the, our audience uh, with uh, all your tips and, uh, and your success story because it's also about success story. So thank you and thank you.
Bye, bye. And so let's get started again with the last round table. If I may add yes. only one thing for all the, for all the attendants. Uh, don't hesitate to contact us, me or all the panelists on LinkedIn or other social networks. I'm only on LinkedIn and uh, to engage if you have more questions. Thank you. And maybe, thank you. Who knows? Maybe Alpha Sigma, Mer, Constellantis, or Jean Paul, or, or even Simona will be higher. We will be able to hire uh, uh, in, in the near future some of our <laughs> PhD, freshly graduated PhD. Maybe who knows? Okay? It's a question of being the right time, in the right place, the right time. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, all, and goodbye. Bye.